listen as I go through. Uh, oh, okay. All right, so remember, guys, there's a couple couple things. This is number 43. Um, now, number 43, I remember, guys, whenever we're graphing our, um, our uh, trig functions, there's, do we just need to make sure we find, of course, our first two things which we practice, which is our amplitude, which is the absolute value of A, and the period, which is 2 pi over B. All right. Now, if you forget what your amplitude and your period or what your A and B are, you have to remember our, our uh, general form, which is A cosine of BX minus C um, plus, what did they use? B. Right? So when I'm talking about the amplitude, I want to find the absolute value of A. So you can obviously see A is going to be my number that's in front of cosine. So that's going to be the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Now remember the amplitude is going to tell us how high and how low our graph is going to go from the x-axis. Okay? Then we need to find the period. So your period, you're going to take 2 pi divided by b. So you're going to take the number that is in front of your x and just two, take 2 pi and divide by that number. Well, we notice there's a 1, right, that's in front since we're not representing it. So our period is simply going to be 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. Now remember, if you remember what our paragraph looks like, and I'll just do one period. Remember, the period is the distance that it takes your graph to complete one cycle, meaning for it where it starts to where it finishes to get back to where it starts again, right? Because these are cyclical functions. These are going to keep on going on and on forever. But the distance for it to complete one cycle is what we call a period, all right? So you have to know what the cosine graph starts with, what it looks like. Got it? Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we found the amplitude, we found the period. That's the most important thing you need to find. Now we look at this and say, all right, well, what is this pi doing? And what is the, you know, what else can we have? Well, we can look for reflections. There's no reflection there, so we're good on that. The other thing is we need to look at, all right, now we have horizontal or vertical translations. And what you notice here is, remember, whenever you have a Translation inside the function is going to be a horizontal translation. Now, um, I think on previous times I showed you guys how to do it. Um, what I'm going to show you are previous times how to just take your graph and translate it pi over. If you guys look at this, this is a translation of negative pi over, right? All you're really doing is just shifting your whole graph, negative pi units. But what I'm going to show you today is how to use our endpoints to find the translation. So before we do that, though, let's just start a graph with what we're going to, what we know it's going to look like. So if I have my 2 pi, let's just say I'm going to have 2 pi over here. The next really important thing that we can do is take what your, take your 2 pi and, or whatever your period is and divide it by 4. The reason why you want to divide it by 4 is because there's four important points in a period. And for the cosine, the four important points are represented by two intercepts, a minimum point, and the end of your period. So we have this point, this point, this point, and this point. Those are kind of four important points for you to graph. So if I take my two, um, 2 pi divided by 4, it's going to end up being pi over 2. So what that means is the distance between each important part, and I know my graph is not very representative of this, but the distance between each of these points is going to be pi over 2. So if my final period is 2 pi, um, let's see, half of that would be pi. So let's see, the first important point I said is pi over 2. So you go over there and you say, well, that's pi over 2 over. Well, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is going to give you pi, plus another pi over 2 is going to give you 3 pi over 2. So what I just want to make sure you guys all understand is when you take your period, whenever you take your period and you divide it by 4, each one of these sections is pi over 2, when you ever take your period divided by 4. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. And that's not going to change unless you change your period. So it doesn't matter how I shift this left or right, the distance between those points is always going to be pi over 2. Make sense? Okay. So now we need to say, well, we know that in a cosine graph, without any translation, 
It starts at zero on the x, y, and it ends at two pi, right? Well, now we just said this. Now there's going to be a translation. We're actually going to shift it pi units to the left. Now you could graph this whole graph and then just shift it and see what it looks like. But I want to show you a form, a way that we can do this um, because it's going to be more powerful when we start using tangent and cotangent um, functions. So if you guys know that it starts at zero, you can say zero is equal to x plus pi, and zero is, or I'm sorry, and then two pi is equal to x plus pi. So what I did was I took our two endpoints, which were 0 and 2 pi, and I set them equal to what our function was. And what I did, what, the reason why I did that is because whatever my translation is, is going to show us what our new endpoint will be. So if our original endpoint was at 0, by now completing my translation, by solving for x, what I notice is I'm going to now get my new endpoint. So think about it, guys. If you took this point and you said shift it pi to the left, it's now going to be at where? Negative. Negative pi. So this is just an algebraic way for me to show you how to get your end point. Because not always is the math going to be that easy. right? So it's helpful for you guys to have a formula that you can use and say, oh, all right. If I can always just take whatever my original endpoints are, which would be 0 and 2 pi of a period, and then just set them equal to whatever's inside my function, then solve for x, and what you get is now my new endpoints are at pi and negative pi. So I gotta make sure that I have pi and negative pi graphed in here. So this would be negative pi over two, and this would be negative pi. So now my new endpoints are pi. Let's do a different color. Now my new endpoints are pi, pi, negative pi, and pi. All right, now one thing I, did not mention was make sure our amplitude's at three, so let's make sure we represent this at three. Okay, so that's three units up. So now to graph this, and let's go three units down. So my original graph would look something like this. That's what the original graph would look like. It has an altitude of three units up. It goes three units down. It crosses at each important point, right? But now what we've done is we've taken that graph. We found the new we found the new endpoints. We shifted it to the left, and now my new important points are looking. You guys notice the distance is still pi over two, right? Yeah. Remember I said that every distance had to be pi over two. Well, it still works. The distance is still pi over two between each of those. So now I'm going to cross here, I'm going to go down here, and it's going to cross back here, and of course it ends there. You now, oh. there. And then, if you can keep on continuing, and then this would be another one, which would be pi over 2 plus 2 pi. So if you just want to keep on adding your points, just do, just keep on, if you need to find out, like, what is the next increment? Just keep on adding pi over 2 to every unit. Just keep on adding pi over 2. And this is going to continue on forever and ever to the left and to the right. Anybody have any questions on this? No? Everybody's ready for homework quiz already right now? Yeah. But anybody questions? I mean, it's pretty much just find the amplitude, the period, graph it, get it like that, and then look for your translations. If you have a vertical translation, it's just going to be simply taking the graph and shifting it up or down. But a horizontal, it's really helpful if you find the endpoints and then just start with your endpoints and then graph from there. And the other main important thing is make sure you guys take your period, divide it by four, so you can find the distance between your important points. All right? Okay. And somebody.